I'm Sandra Clark. I'm WHYY's President, Vice President of News and Civic Dialogue. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to this special evening with Philadelphia's own Patti LaBelle. So many of you know WHYY for bringing great PBS and NPR programs alongside all of our local news and arts and culture programming. But as your home for public media and dialogue, WHYY also brings you dozens of events each year featuring the leading scholars, artists, and newsmakers of our time. And none is more cherished than Patti LaBelle. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, without WHYY's members and supporters and great partners like WURD, okay, I paused for that. Uh, none of this would be possible. So let me pause for a minute to express some gratitude. Uh, first, we'd like to recognize our WHYY members and thank you for your unwavering support in making events like this happen. I'd also like to extend a thank you to our WHYY board member, Stephen Bradley of Bradley and Bradley Associates. And Stephen has been a staunch supporter of WHYY, including sponsoring our recent Black Joy event and Africa's Great Civilizations event. I think uh, our COO, Kira McGrath, is here too. Kira, are you here? Oh, okay. She's in the sound room. Kira's in the sound room. Uh, hi, Kira. Uh, and then, once again, I'd like to thank uh, WURD and their president and CEO, Sarah Lomax-Reese, for being our promotional partner for this event. Okay, so now let's get to what you're waiting for. First, let me introduce broadcaster and music industry veteran, Deanna Williams. <laughs> Deanna has been a longtime friend of Patty's and of WHYY, and we're counting on her tonight to ask all the questions that we want answers to, like what's in that pie anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, we are thrilled that she is here again uh, with us tonight. And joining Deanna on stage is a woman who needs no introduction. I feel like I should kick my heels off or something when I'm talking. <laughs> I won't do that. No pedicure, I won't do that. Um, legendary singer. Actress, TV host, entrepreneur, style ambassador, cook supreme. Did I leave anything out? Oh, and author of a new cookbook, uh, yeah. Desserts La Belle. <laughs> okay. As we all know, Patty has dazzled audiences all around the world, and so has her food. So, everyone, please join me in welcoming Deanna Williams and the incomparable Patty LaBelle. First and Thank foremost, you. I think my mic should be on. Maybe not. It's on now. I'm good. Thank you, Pat. Welcome to WHYY. It is a distinct pleasure on behalf of Patty and myself to have you join us in support of public broadcasting. Those of you who are members overstand the significance of the kind of programming that happens here at our local PBS affiliate. And those of you who aren't, well, we pray that after tonight you become more aware of the commitment and the passion of the people who work here to provide us with quality programming. And beyond that, we are here to celebrate what I consider to be royalty, American and international <laughs> royalty. Thank you. So in addition to being imbued with one of the finest voices that God ever gave anybody, uh, as we just heard in the introduction, she is an entrepreneur, she's a humanitarian, she's a mother, she's a nana, she is a family friend, she is a caring citizen of our city. And I will tell you, so many artists have moved away from Philadelphia. They're either in New York, LA, Atlanta. She is still in this area. And that is significant. It's significant because clearly she has roots in our city that, you know, you, LA will never have. Yeah. And not to say that she doesn't have homes elsewhere, but there is no place like home. You would agree with me Definitely. on that one. Yeah. 
And uh, someone asked me earlier, when did Patty and I meet? I said, we met in 1973 in Washington, D.C., a long time ago. Yes. And so our relationship goes very deep. We've had peaks and valleys and, you know, just an amazing relationship that has covered so much of her career because I started in radio in the 70s in Washington, D.C. But she started her career right here in Philadelphia. All right, so Patty, you've got this long career. We're going to try to go up through the eras and bring it up to the 21st century because you have been a dynamo in the 20th into the 21st century. And what a career, what a life. It keeps elevating. I mean, it just keeps getting bigger and greater and grander. But the year was 1960, the Ordettes. Oh, yeah. What do you remember about that? I'm talking about the original Ordettes. I know. The original, it was um, Cindy Berta. Was Cindy in the original? No, I'm talking about the know. first Ordette. She said she don't know. I forgot. I'm talking about the, OK, that's hilarious, OK? Who was okay. the Ordettes? Oh, Johnny no. Johnny Dawson, that's Jean Johnny. Brown, and oh, Yvonne. the other girls. Mm, the other girls, yes. the ones that ran off and got married. That's right, the Ordettes. It was Johnny, yeah, Johnny Dawson. I can't remember Yvonne. the other name. Yvonne who? Uh, let's see. But uh, she Yvonne was. Hogan, Hogan. And who else? Jean Brown. Jean Brown. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that was 1960. Okay. That was That was brief. my first singing uh, group. How right? old were you? Do you remember how old were you? I were? must have been, I don't know. You were a baby. I was, I'm serious. I don't remember time. 17. I was 17? Yes. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> She's doing the math. I was 17? <laughs> She's doing the math. Okay, so I did that with, the, with those three ladies. And then... It was the Ordettes. Cindy? No, shut up, Patty. Go ahead. <laughs> OK. OK, so after that group, then you formed Patty LaBelle and the Bluebells in this time frame. And that was Sarah Cindy Dash, Bird's song, Sarah Dash. Nona Hendrix and, Nona Hendrix and that girl. Yes. Right. And so that lasted, that girl, that, that good girl. And so that lasted for how long? <laughs> Tell um, me. That, well, that lasted for a good while. But you did an incarnation in the 70s and became LaBelle La when Vicki when Wickham Cindy, was managing you. When Cindy went to the Supremes. Diana Ross left and the group, right? Was that how it who? happened? No, Florence. Wait, did you say who? I said... <laughs> no! Uh, no! Don't start none, won't be none. Y'all are messy. No, no. Cindy Birdsong was asked to come to the Supremes, uh, and she left one night, we had a performance, and who? Diana what? Diana who? I mean, what did you say? He said Diana stole her. No, she didn't. No, you know what? This was a great opportunity okay, for Cindy Birdsong from Camden, New Jersey. We were making no money. We were singing our hearts out and, and you know, kibbles and bits. The Supremes were paid. So Cindy had a choice to stay with Broke LaBelle, or go with the Supremes. And I would have done it maybe too if I had the opportunity. So you never know until you're put in a situation what you might do if somebody says, okay, it's better on the other side. It's greener, the grass. And then you get there and find out that it might not have been as green as you wanted it to be, but you stay because of the prestige. And we love Cindy still to the day. I, I speak to her, you know, and she had to make up her mind to go that way. And she was in a great group. Yeah, no, the Supremes. Yes. Motown Philly back again. Ooh, and no shade. I mean, no Diana shade. Ross is one of my better friends now. You know, so it comes and it goes and it ends up well. She's in New York uh, performing next week at the City Center. I know. Can you get and us some tickets? And she's going to be at the man. Yeah, I can get you tickets. Okay, ah! thank you. Oh, yes, yes. So, uh, so down the aisle, the wedding song, I sold mm -hmm. my heart to the junk man. Danny Boy, you yes. had all these great hits mm -hmm. with Patti LaBelle, Patti LaBelle and the Blue Bells. And the Blue Bells. And that was uh, for a long time we were together. And we were just special. I mean, we could really sing. All of us could sing. It was no one lead singer. I just ended up singing most of the lead, but Nona has a great voice, Sarah Dash. And Cindy Birdsong wasn't a lead singer, but she was a great background singer. Mm -hmm. And we did our best, and we, uh, 
did LaBelle until we couldn't do it. I mean, did Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells until we couldn't do that anymore. LaBelle, and then it was Patti LaBelle. Right, but let's go back to LaBelle for a moment because mm -hmm. I think that's also a sweet part of your career yeah. with your still girlfriends, yes. um, Sarah and Nona. I remember the year was 1974. The venue was the pristine home of opera. I'm referring to the Metropolitan Opera House, and your group was the first group to perform non-operatic performance. Music, and we were the first black. First black, and it, honey, oh, the God. word went out. Mind you, no internet. The word was, everybody wears silver. Right. And everybody did. They came with their butts hanging out. It was, the, you know the group called the Cycle Sluts? They were there. Cher was there. And they, they all had their silver. Everybody had to wear something silver. And they did. They came in with silver hair, silver, everything. And that's when we were being, ex I was being extended from the ceiling to the stage. You know, we were flying in, baby. Before, before, before some Pink. of the kids, before. Yeah, Pink did it, but you did yes. it first. We were the first to do a few things. And so that night was wonderful. And a lot of people said after that, how did you get that gig? I said, Ron Delsner, I told Vicki Wickham, our manager at the time, let's just ask Ron Delsner. He could say yes or no. He was a promoter at the uh -huh. time. And he mm -hmm. said yes. Mm -hmm. So when you live and you love and you want to do things, don't be afraid to ask because the answer could be yes. And that was a big yes. Yeah. Yes, that was so a wonderful, don't be afraid. memorable performance. Uh -huh. So, okay, so then LaBelle. Well, first, I want to go a little forward because you did this extraordinary album. If you guys have not heard this one, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite you to go dig on YouTube or go to iTunes or wherever you purchase your music to hear Laura Nero and LaBelle. That is still one of my all-time favorite albums. Mine, too. Really. This was done um, in Philly with Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff and Laura Nero, my good friend, the godmother of my son, Zuri. She's mm -hmm. no longer here, but she wrote, you know, songs for everybody. She's just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to be my girlfriend. She wanted to live her life like I lived mine. This was so funny. She would come and stay at my house, and then at that time, she wasn't married. And she said, I want a husband just like yours. So she found a guy, he wasn't, he wasn't black, he's white. She found a white husband who reminded her so much of my husband. We traveled to Japan together, and that's where Zori was conceived. In Japan, with Laura Nero, one night only, I had sake. No, uh, it's true. Zuri, do you know the story? It's so true. And Zori doesn't like to hear the story, but it's, you know. He said he doesn't like to hear the story. You I know, but like so what? It's, it was beautiful. And Laura Nero brought me to so many levels of life, like the very rich, rich, rich high life into the low, low, low life in Japan. She took us to the worst hotel. She said, this is how they live when you have to stand over those things and go to the bathroom. And then she took us to the five-star hotel, me and my husband at the time, and we just lived with her. And then she came to my home and lived and brought me muscles and stuff. Uh, she was coming from man, 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 the cove somewhere. I don't know where they had clams and stuff. And then she would bring them because I would cook and I would make potato salad and stuff and she loved my cooking. And she became Zori's godmother and one of my better friends. And she's not here, but her memory will last forever. And that great yeah. album, that great Ooh, collaboration. Wanna Take a Miracle? It's so, I love that. Mm -hmm. no. Yes, the wind, just, all of that is just. And we did a lot of imperfection in that album. Was really? A lot of things that were wrong. But when we listened back, we said the wrong is right. And Kenny said, don't fix that. I said, no, we won't fix it. So it's, a, it's one of those special projects. So, Mary. okay, moving forward, or no, going backwards a little. Dick Clark's American Bandstand was based here in Philadelphia, the first national dance music show of that nature. Did that help broaden your audience and kind of help you cross over a little? Sure. Because you were... It, Opened there, a lot of a doors, bit. you know. It was Dick Clark uh, being on that show and opening for the Rolling Stones, opening for the Who, opening for, uh, God, Elton John. Elton John opened for me okay. back in the day. He was my piano player in oh, a yeah. group in London called um, Bluesology, and he was Reggie White at the time. And so he was our piano player. So we bring him home to our flat. We had a flat, beautiful flat. 
and I had food and they were hungry because I love to play cards and we won all of their money, all of their pounds. The little band, they were probably paid $5 a week or something. So I said, oh, Elton, you guys, no, Reggie at the time, come up and I'll fix you some dinner. So Elton took a lot of food home because they were hungry. And so a year later, he called me and said, Patty, it's Reggie. I said, Reggie, where are you? He said, I'm in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. I want you to come and see me. So I said, who are you opening for? He said, I'm Elton John now. I said, excuse me. <laughs> he made it before I did, and, but I still wanted my Tupperware. So uh, about, about three, three years ago, I did this uh, project, you know, singing with some of my friends. Elton John and I sang, oh, God, his song. Anyway, whatever it was. He played the piano for this song. He took off his diamond ring and put it on the piano. So when he finished, I said, Elton, here's your ring. He said, no, that's yours for the Tupperware. I said, hey. <laughs> I have it, it's so big. That's a good exchange. Yeah. That's a good exchange. I but haven't had it melted down. the first love gift that you've gotten because who? I remember when you did Richard Pryor, oh, you God, toured yes. with Richard Pryor. You didn't yes. know how to drive. Excuse me, you still don't know how to drive. Still don't know how to drive. But he gave you a Rolls Royce. No, was it, it a was a Cadillac. Oh, a Cadillac? I thought it was he a Rolls Royce. He took me to, we were in Detroit okay, doing the Cadillac. show. Okay. And that's the city, the Motor City. So he took me to buy his aunt a car. So I said, what, what, how old is she? He told me, I said, what colors are here? He said, gray. I said, oh, this beautiful blue gray car would go great with your uh, aunt and grandmother's hair. And so he said, get in it, Patty. I said, why? I can't drive. He said, just get in it. So I got in, it was me and Norma and somebody in my band, we went together. And so I drove, I went to the car, he said, now put the key in the ignition. I said, where's the ignition? <laughs> you know, I had no clue. He said, right there. So he turned it on for me. He said, this is your car. I said, Richard, I can't take it because I'm married and my husband might have got the wrong idea. So he said, no, let me call him. So he called Armstead and said, I love your wife's talent. I think she deserves this car. So we had that car in my car, another car at home. But and he bought me a sauna, he bought me jewelry. He just, because he said nobody could ever pay you enough. He oh, didn't wow. think I was being paid, but I was being paid yeah. well. But he just thought, you know, with, with a, probably with a black woman, she's not gonna get what the other women would right. get. So he extra, he gave me extra and gifts. And it was a beautiful thought. I still have the sauna. Yeah, what about the car? What happened to the car? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> the car, I, you know, I think we traded it in for something because I couldn't drive it. Right. And just wonderful stories about people like that. Well, and I want to give you another name, another person who was very instrumental in your career, giving you one of your early number one hits. I think this was a huge number one record. And I'm referring to New Orleanian. Oh, Alan, Alan Toussaint. Toussaint. You and say Lady Toussaint or Toussaint? Toussaint. Toussaint. Yeah. You say tomato, I say tomato. But we know who we talk right. about. Right, Alan. Right. Alan. Yes, Alan. Yeah, Alan. Right. Late, and, and do you say Lady Marmalade or Lady Marmalade? Both. Both. And to make okay. it simple, Lady M. Oh, okay. There you hey, go. Hey, just Lady M. And so we got this song from Bob Crew on the way to New Orleans to record this project, and. Bob Cruz said, come to the house. Vicki Wickham, our manager at the time, so we went to his, his place in LA before we went to the airport, and he played Lady M. And we said, this is a hit. We had no clue what Vuli Vukushe Avagwasa, so I meant. We knew it was one of those hooks. You know when you hear songs and they have a certain hook? And so I said, that's a hit. So when we got there, we said to Alan, let this be the first song to record. He listened to it, he said, Patty, this is a hit. I said, okay, and it was. And, and it, it is. is. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you it is. You can't get through a perform. You can't I do a show to, without doing it. I have right? to do that and over the rainbow. Those two songs have. They have to be done. Yeah. So, and that was a good gift. So moving up, Patti LaBelle becomes a solo artist, and uh, of course another string of hits for you, uh, on my own. Um, what, the great Michael McDonald. Yes, uh, you are Tell my us a friend. little something about that song. What are your memories of that song? On my own? Yeah. Uh, Richard Perry was the producer, mm -hmm. and he was a little f f special. <laughs> so
So I was in Los Angeles for a long time doing this project. I hate LA. So I was out there with all of those snooty pooties and stuff like that. And he wanted me to record on my own his way. So I said, what's wrong with my way? He said, well, if you want to get a hit, you better sing it like this. Oh. And so I did the song, hated it, threw it away. Uh, Burt Bacharach heard about me not wanting to, because he wrote this song, that Patty threw the song away. So Bert and Carol Bear said, came to the uh, studio and said, Patty, please, do you want to do this song with anyone else? So I said, oh, and I didn't like Richard, the producer, at all. So he had put a nasty thing in my, in my mind, and he would go out and have coke breaks or some kind of drugs mm. and come back three hours later. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm waiting to record, so when he got there, I was pissed. And so I said, I'm not going to record it. He said, how are you going to throw a hit like this way? I said, because you're producing me wrong. Mm. So Bert came and said, Patty, is there anyone? So I said, yes, I love Michael McDonald. So I did my version, and two weeks later, they called Michael in, and he did his version. We never met. So we did uh, the video. I did it in Separate. Brooklyn. Separate. He did it in L.A. Get out. The first time we met was on Johnny Carson's show, doing On My Own. And he was so sweet, and Burt Bacharach and Carol stayed in my life. And I never will record with certain producers ever again. You know, that didn't happen just once. There are some people that you have behind that board who think they're God, and you have to do it this way or no way. So Michael, Michael McDonald saved that song. Yes. Well, the combination, of the, your, the contrast of your voices. Yes. And then the, the story, Carol Bayer Sager, great lyricist oh, and yes. wonderful, I mean, just a wonderful song mm -hmm. um, for people, uh, anybody in here ever break up with somebody? Okay, it's I a perfect so. song. Yeah, yeah I, it is the song. So for that occasion. one was something that was saved. And you know what? Some songs got away with me, too. Let me tell you about this. Okay, which one? Uh, Michael, no, not Michael. What's his name? Jordan. What's the guy's name? Jordan. What does he this do? This is how we do it. Oh, Montel Jordan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So my, uh, Montel Jordan had this great song for me. He said, somebody gave him my number and he called and he said, let me just play this song for you. And he played it for me. I think we met and he played it, not over the phone. And I said, oh, I hate that song. Right? <laughs> no, I did. And then I heard it by Deborah Cox. Why did wow. you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. I said, I don't like that Another song. Another song you turned down? Well, after she did that, I was so shamed. Uh. But the good thing about it is that was her first hit. Mm -hmm. Thank God I turned it down. And she's one of those fabulous singers forever she can sing. And so she always thanks me when she sees me. Patty, you saved my life by giving me that song, by turning down the song. So it's been so many things in my life that I'm happy I did. I'm so happy I turned it down. At but I put point, it in my show and I sang it. OK, because you still love it. I said, I these are the down. songs that got away. These are the hits that got yes. away. Uh -huh. Well, you've had this a very eclectic a career. And as far as music is concerned, and I want to kind of move up through the music and get to Patti LaBelle, the actress, because I believe it was the Net Carol's Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope was your first Broadway Foray? No, it was no? Arms Too Short. Uh, I'm, uh, was it Arms Too Short? What did to I say? Box with God. That's what I meant. Uh -huh. I think Bennett Carroll did that as well. Yes, she did. Your Arms Too Short to I didn't Box do the with other God. One. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. That's for what it was. See yeah. what happens as we get older? My memory's Girl, getting kind of. But, but we still get the point. Yeah, we get to the point. Yes, thank you. Okay, yes. so Broadway. That was uh -huh. your first time, though, acting. First time doing a, a Broadway play. What was the energy? Mm -hmm. What was the emotion? How did you feel? Scared. Mm -hmm. Because this is not my Patty show. I have to go on point so the next actor can do their part on time. I can't improvise. So I said, I can't do no improv improvisation, whatever you call it, say. Mm -hmm. So I can't improvise. They said, no, you have to stick to script. So that was scary because I'm just not that girl who can just do stuff right on time all the time. But I learned. You learned. How to do it on time. Well, and that was a wonderful play. And then Al Green was added to the play, who he and I did the lead. Mm -hmm. oh. OK, we're listening. What was that experience like working with Al Green? It was strange. 
I love him so much, but he wanted to have his name in front of mine oh. on the marquee. Oh. And I could care less mm -hmm. because I still had to do my part. Mm -hmm. And then it was just a little confusion with he and I, and I didn't understand why. So that was the first and the last time that you worked with Al Green? Yes. Okay, got you. And do I love him? Very, yes. I still do his song on my show. Which uh, one? Uh, love and Happiness. Love and Happiness. Woo! I love that yeah. song, I love him. It's a great but song. But he wasn't having Patty that time, at that time. I have to be honest, I'm not gonna sit up here and no, we love your act candor. like things no. never happen. And no. it's also, it's something that I wrote about in my uh, Don't Block the Blessings book. You know, right. I don't lie. Yeah, no, your autobiography was a very candid, forthcoming, uh, un unfiltered uh, autobiography. And, and, and you know, we need that because people wanna know. I mean, you know, think of, think of those of you who are here obviously are here because you love Patty. Um, and, and have followed her through her career. So the, the thing that we also appreciate about you is the fact that you are candid. You, you don't, uh, it's straight no chaser, okay? There's no, there's no chaser. None. And that's, that's just and, and for me to real. sit right here now and not tell the real truths about certain things, I'm a phony. Yeah, and you're not that. And I'm never, not that never, girl. Not that girl. No, not no. that girl. Right. Okay, so let's go to the epic years. Mm. Uh, the epic years. What do you remember most about those, I think, four or five albums that you did at Epic? Well, yeah. first of all, you are my friend. Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? Everything from Bud the, Ellison. Yes, of um, course, Bud Ellison. Uh -huh. uh, the greatest musical director and... I can't remember some of the things I've done on okay. Epic. Well, you? Epic you did, let's see. Well, you are my friend. You did it during that period of time. Right. Um, but then you went to, you hooked up with a childhood friend, Kenny Ooh. Gamble. Let's talk oh, about. Kenny, yes. Kenny Gamble okay. and Leon Huff. Philadelphia Kenny International Gamble. Records. I lived on Washington Avenue, you know, in Southwest Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And Kenny had friends who lived on Washington Avenue, some guys, uh, Jonathan Black and some other guys. So Kenny met me and found out that I could sing. But I was very shy and I wasn't gonna let anybody hear me sing. And for some reason he got into my space and made me sing. And he said, girl, you should be recording. <laughs> and so- You were teenagers at that we point. We were teenagers and mm -hmm. I would have beer on the steps because we had steps and we were sitting out on my mother's steps and I had beer. And Kenny would say me, he said, your mama's coming. And I would put the beer away. He didn't drink it, but I did. You know, so he was like my protector friend. Uh -huh. And then I found out that he could produce me. And so we went in the studio and recorded, I don't remember the first songs we did. Like, uh, what is it? What's wrong, Patty? It's, uh, Love and Need and Want You? Love and Need and Want You, uh, If Only, if you, only knew. you Knew. Um, These are the great Philly so International many. Patti LaBelle Gamble Huff songs. I'm in love again. Yeah. Oh, dang, so many. We did so much music together, he and uh, Leon. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we know sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love, need, want you. So many more, though. And we're still together. And he said, Patty, I got some songs with you, girl. <laughs> I said, bring them over. So he's going to come into. Uh, to my crib soon uh, with, some, with some beautiful music. It's a great crib. And it, Kenny is such a genius. When you listen to the radio, all you hear is Kenny Gamble, Philly International. What's that? Somebody's phone. If y'all don't mind turning your phones off or putting them on airplane mode or something like that. Ah. And so he's just like, every time you listen on the radio, you hear Philly International, you hear Kenny Gamble. Um, and I, I think Philly has something on Motown. You know, the Philly sound is like, it's phenomenal. I love Motown, but I, I appreciate the Philadelphia sound. Nobody has it. It's like special, so special. And, well, you were uh, on the roster with Phyllis Hyman, Lou Rawls, yes. um, Teddy Pendergrass, Gene Carn. Mm -hmm. Who of that roster were you closest to? Oh, as a friend? Oh, the OJs, Eddie Burke. 
Phyllis, Phyllis Hyman. Wow, tell us about oh, your relationship with Phyllis Hyman. Phyllis Hyman and my sister Jackie were the best, best of friends. And so Jackie brought Phyllis home. And I loved her energy. And when that heifer sang, I said, Woo! This is my girlfriend. So we went to shows together. We went to see Aretha Franklin together. Who? Aretha. Who? <laughs> my idol. Okay. Yesterday I did an interview with Extra, and it's going to air maybe tonight. And they said, is there anyone living or not that you would want to do a duet with? Mm. I said, Aretha Franklin. Yeah. And he looked at me like I was crazy. You know, whatever. She is my hero. Let's set the record straight, because there's been a lot of chatter ugly stuff. about ugly. you and Aretha having a contentious relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think millions saw the White House performance mm -hmm. where there looked like there was some shade. Uh, first of all, let me commend you for saying, because me personally, I would buy a ticket, a CD, an album, whatever you want to call it, to see the two of you perform. I would too. Or to, to be together. I mean, you know what? Her voice is like Kenny Gamble mm. forever. Mm. And I understand she might be retiring, but I would love to sing with her before she does. Yeah. That's a hero. She's awesome. Great. We have to say this. No matter what people say that she and I have, whatever, could be. But that didn't stop me from loving her. Because y'all came out around the same time. Yes. Y'all were on the charts, active, performing, oh, doing the Uptown, yes. Philadelphia, uh -huh. doing uh, the Apollo Theater. You were on the We've same done, circuit. We've um, done, you know, shows with Tom Joyner together. Mm -hmm. And we did the show at the White House together. And whatever happened, happened. But I still love her. Gotcha. I want to sing with that lady. Gotcha. She's the best. Yeah, My no, Jesus. She, is quite she can something. sing her face off, and I, and I want to be with her. So after the initial fear, I want to go back to your acting. After mm -hmm. the initial fear and you did um, the play on Broadway, you went on to do sitcoms. Mm -hmm. um, At All Night. At All Night. Your own. Yes. It was Out All Night. But before that, you did? I did something else. Uh -huh. Oh, Different World. Different World. Thank different you. World. Thank you. Different World. A Chipmunk's Mother. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's it, I think. What's the difference for you as a performer acting? I mean, you mentioned earlier that you have to be specific, follow a script. You cannot improvise. It's what no are the other nothing differences? Nothing like sing. singing is the best Yeah. on stage because I'm free to be me. When you do a, a scripted show, you have to stick to the script. And you have to remember. So my thing was so awesome, I remember everybody's lines. So <laughs> I was right on point. <laughs> that was kind of like fun. And 10 years you know? later, you went back to uh, Broadway, and you did the very successful Jay-Z, Beyonce launched play, Fela, Fela. And you played Fela's mother. Yes. What was that like for you to go back to Broadway after having done tons of television, your successful touring recording career, mm -hmm. here you were back on Broadway. Back and having so much fun and really remembering that I have to stick to script. Stick to script. You know, so uh, Fumalaya, that was my uh, character's name. Fumalaya had to get under that thing on my head. What was it? Gayla. Gayla, yeah. Gayla. Child, but I said, can we have another costume? Because you know, but they clean them all the time. Uh -huh. But I always say, oh, it stinks. You know, because you have to wear it for eight shows, but it didn't stink because I smell good. But I don't like wearing the same thing, you know, every night, every night, every show, same gala, same whatever. And knowing how to dance on that high behind stage, child. Yeah. One night I lost my tooth. Oh. My real tooth. Right. Fell out. Um, I sold the dancers, next show don't dance around if you see a white tooth. <laughs> Listen, I was eating lamb chops oh, and God. bit the tooth out. So that, that night I said, dancers, please, if you find something white, it's not paper, it's my tooth. <laughs> so it was a Sunday. My dentist waited for me and fixed my teeth. Oh, wow, me. good dentist. So it's been some wonderful, fun times. <laughs> <laughs> Just real. I mean, oh, got to be real. Oh, OK, so you've had multiple, like, okay, Frank Sinatra, I would say, my way. 
Could we all agree that that was his signature song? Yeah. Could you agree? Uh -huh. Yes. What do you consider your signature song? Because you have this very long recording career. Mm. I know you have a new album coming out. We'll talk about that mm -hmm. momentarily. Yes. But what do you consider your signature songs, plural? Of course, it's Over the Rainbow. Over the you Rainbow. Know, it's like I can't do a show without doing that. But I have a new song on my jazz album that's coming out. It's by Shirley Horn. Here's to life. Here's Girl, to wait. Life. Can I just tell Here's you? Here's to you. No, when I saw the line, um, the lineup of your songs, uh -huh. I flipped because that album, Here's to Life. She won a Grammy for Ooh, it yes. with strings. Shirley Horn. If you haven't heard, oh it's God. a great album. You have Here's to. Here's to life. I was thrilled to hear um, that you did um, To the Wind as well. Uh, Wild is the Wind. Nina Wild Simone. Wild is the Wind. I love her. Oh, and I yeah. did three songs by Nina Simone, Frank Sinatra. Uh, Gloria Lynn, Moody's, Moody, James Moody. Moody's Mood for Moody's Love. with Kim is singing on that oh, with me, okay. yes. And when I did it, I said, I don't think I could do jazz. And after, after a year and heard it mixed and everything, I, I was totally involved in all the process of it. And I said, oh, that's not so bad. I really appreciate me trying something because I haven't done one in 10 years, music. And this you haven't was done an album in 10 years? 10 years. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. I did not realize and that. And this is something that I did, and I'm happy I did it. So happy I did this. Well, we should get ready. The album is coming out next week. I think the it's fifth. A, May 5th. May 5th, yes, May 5th. Yes. Uh -huh. And um, we should also mention, as, as you continue your entrepreneurial experience as a woman in business in the United States and around the world, this record is on your own label. Yes. Tell us about the label, what it's, it's called. Um, it's called um, GPE. -E. That's for Gia, my granddaughter, Patricia, me, and Edward's my last name. And it's um, Sony Red label. And it's mine, so I can do. I'm about to go in the studio to start the gospel album. Oh, that's the one start, I was about to ask yeah, you. And yes. to start a new Christmas album and just songs, like songs from, uh, gosh, Lou Rawls, I'm going to do You'll Never Find. A Gamble It Up song. Yeah, yes. And, and, and I can do whatever I want to do. Yes, you can. Now. It's your label. And it's my time. Yes, it is. It's my it time to shine. Is. Hey. Yes, it is. <laughs> So, and so many things. years ago, as you keep referencing food and cooking for people, and you started doing cookbooks. And now you have, I want to say, is it six books? Does this, this make is, six or uh, seven? the fourth cookbook. You, is this, this the fourth? The fourth, uh-huh. I thought this was the fifth. It could be. OK, possibly. <laughs> We're not sure uh, on the number. I, I think it's, it's five. four. It's the sixth book, because including, Zuri's including the your, Don't Block the um, Blessings your, your and yes. um, Patty's Pearls. Yes, but this Patty is the Pearl. fourth cookbook. Fourth cookbook? Uh huh, I think. Sixth book in total. Yes. Okay, so you added author. And what was it like? Let's go back to your autobiography, the first one. What was that like? What kind of, because um, it's exposure. Don't Block the Blessing? Yeah, Don't Block the Blessing. It, it was you just were like, my being Patty LaBelle talking about her real life and things that I've been through, things that I probably will go through again, and just, it just freed my mind. You know, when you talk about yourself to other people, you're letting everybody know who you are. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, why should fans come to my show just to see me sing and not really know about me? Let them read it. Okay. Yes. So can, can we, we expect another in the series? Like Maya Angelou did several autobiographies, mm -hmm. can we expect, expect another one from you? Possible. At some point it's in the future? It's possible, yeah. At this point, I mean, now you're a mother of adult children. You have uh, Zuri, of course, who is mm -hmm. your manager. Um, yes. You have Dodd um, mm -hmm. and Stanley. Stanley. Uh, you and two adopted children. And I have my children. niece, Stacy and, and Billy. Right, mm -hmm. Stacy, your niece. And uh, but let's talk about the new addition to your life that has redefined you in many ways, because we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. uh, we both became Nanas. Well, she's a glam mom. I'm Nana Deanna. She's a glam mom. Uh, Nana Deanna. And Nana Deanna. And but I'm, I'm glam mom. You're glam mom. Mm -hmm. You're a glam mom. Yes. So talk about what an experience for you as this accomplished performer. 
Glam mom at home with Gia. What is that like? It's awesome. She is so cute and so much like me. She's bad. <laughs> She's bad? She's bad. <laughs> she stays in trouble. So she'll, she knows she did something wrong. So know what she'll do? Make her own time out. She'll go against the wall. And, and do like this, right? But she's looking around to see who's looking. And then she'll give herself as much time as she wants. And she'll come back, hi, mommy. Oh. But how you gonna mommy? I, I'm good. I said, no, you're not. You're just like me. She's bad. But I always said to Zori, when we have grandkids, make sure they're bad. I don't want no cute little, <laughs> prissy little, cute little granddaughter. I want her to be bad. I want her to get in trouble. Because she's not gonna get a spanking. Zori won't spank her, her mother won't spank her, and I said, maybe I never will, but she needs to be spanked. How old is she now? <laughs> she's, That's hilarious. She's two and too cute. Two and too she's cute. She's yeah. two, she, she like speaks in both languages. She counts all the way up. She knows all of her symbols, all of her squares, all of her colors. Uh, the doctor says she seems like a three or four year old child. She's you very know, smart. she's very advanced. Yes, she's so very smart. cute. Aww. So cute. I can't wait to see her tomorrow. Tomorrow you get to spend time with her. Yeah, and I like to, she said, Grandma, what you cooking? I said, broccoli, because she loves broccoli. I wasn't making no broccoli, I just told her that. <laughs> she said, she said, where's Mr. Cuddles? He's so cute. My little puppy. Uh -huh. She loves him. I'm sweating like a man. Anybody? Yeah, it's hot up here, y'all. We're hot. Child, Same you got here. a Kleenex? Yeah, Kleenex. Anything? Can we get a Kleenex? But she's my joy. Yeah. She is yeah. my joy. She is absolutely gorgeous. So back to cooking, uh -huh. you also have a wonderful show on the Cooking Channel. Here we go. Thank you mm. so much. Appreciate thank you. it. Oh, thank you so Red. much. Thank you, Red. Yes, I do. Yeah. It's called Patty's about... Place. Mm -hmm. oh. It's uh, my cooking with celebrities or my cooking with just friends, not always celebrities. Uh, anybody from any walk of life can do my show if you can cook. <laughs> And if you but can't then cook, again, if you can, I'll show you. It's a problem. Like 50 Cent couldn't cook, but couldn't I showed cook. him how to mash potatoes, and I think he did the corn, and I did the brisket or short ribs for him. And it's like, it's a fun patty patty cooking show. James Wright did it with me. Okay, well, James Wright. Crazy friend. James Jesus. Wright, many of you may recall, did the viral video, the video that went viral about Patty's pies that are in Walmart. Can we talk about these pies? Which will lead us into Desserts La Belle. Oh, what was your reaction when you saw James's video? I had no clue. First of all, people said that I planned it. I said, I don't even know the kid. Mm -hmm. And so he tasted the pie and had his own real response. He mm -hmm. said he loved them. And so we were in London and we got back to Philly and we, it was all over everywhere, James Wright. Uh, Chanel singing on my own like he can sing his face off he can really sing and he was tasting it and just fell in love and so after that with my peach cobblers and my blueberry cobblers they said are you going to have James do that again I said I don't have him do it at the beginning I said but it would be redundant right. if he did that again don't yeah. do that again. it was a moment in time it was a moment yeah but what a friend he's he's my good friend mm -hmm. yes yes no i see him on uh, instagram he became he became a celebrity as yes. a result of that uh -huh. viral video but your pies could not be kept in the walmarts they said there were every few seconds they were being sold and they've been sold for hundreds of dollars on ebay did that blow your mind? Talk about your reaction to the pies. You know, someone reception. had it up to $12,000 for a pie. 12000 Just crazy stuff. I said, what is this? Mm. You know, and so uh, I just wanted 348 Right, $348. <laughs> yeah. That's all. And it, it just went crazy. And the pies are so good. Delicious. I mean, I wouldn't say this if they weren't, like, shady. They're so good. And they're worth 348 but not twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. No. no. If you could get them, people could not get them. Yeah. I mean, people were going crazy trying to get a hold That's of your true. pies. I, I do remember uh, Thanksgiving dinner, 2016, at your home. I flew back from Johannesburg all day. Edward, I don't know where you are, but Edward said, "Come on, come to dinner." Yeah. And I was like, "What?" I changed the plane ticket. I was you like, did. "I am coming back just for Thanksgiving dinner at your house." And Patty nice. had, when I say boxes. 
and boxes of the sweet potato pies and yes. other pies as well to give to her guests. I was like, boy, what a great Thanksgiving. And what, it was worth the trip. It to was. come back. And we so, had dancing and Yeah, we had a great time. Music. You're, you throw great parties. You're, you're, I sure do. You love to entertain. I, I mean, you entertain to well. Cook. Yeah, and you love I to love cook. to feed people and see a smile and say, can I have seconds? I love that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a show of love. So, okay, the great success with the pies, and then you mm -hmm. came out with cakes. Right, you came out uh, with uh, the blueberry. The was pecan a, apple cake. The pecan, the right. Peach cobbler, peach cobbler, blueberry cobbler, apple cobbler, uh, so many other things, sweet potato roll. Uh, and then I'm coming out with my macaroni and cheese and other oh. savory foods. I am. It's going to be like my stuffing. You know, my, I make some good dressing, uh, chili, pasta, huh? Banana pudding. Oh, that's right. That's it. Banana pudding. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what precipitated just, the book, uh, Desserts LaBelle? What made you decide to do with Laura Randolph, um, Lancaster, friend, she got married? Laura, yes. Uh -huh. it was, uh, was it an outgrowth of the success of the pies? No, this at, was happening before the pies. Before I, the pies? I've been writing this maybe a year before the pies started. I started it. And then with the pie success, it just made sense for me to make a book about 75 other desserts. And when people said, well, how are you writing a cookbook with desserts and you're diabetic, right? I said, because I don't have to eat it. <laughs> I don't have to eat it. I taste it to see if it's good. And then I also say, if you want to make the desserts, if you're having health issues or anything, use uh, substitute sweeteners, mm -hmm. sweeteners like agave, splenda, mm -hmm. or whatever you like. I'm going to make these for you the real way. You do have some recipes. Uh, I can't a see few. Muhammad. You got to come closer. I cannot see that far. You do have recipes, light recipes, for people yes. who are diabetic or there's, have diabetes. Yeah, there's some of those in the book also. But I love writing cookbooks, you know, with things that I can't have. <laughs> yeah. I'll make you happy. Well, the cookbook, um, Desserts LaBelle, came out yesterday. I believe the majority of you will be leaving home, uh, going home with the book today, mm -hmm. thanks to your publisher and you and WHYY. So, and, and we also want to thank um, the, uh, oh, please help me, Adrian, the, the, the company. I'm sorry? Sweet Life Bake Shop. The owner is somewhere here. Where is she? She was here someplace, I think, at the reception. Many of you had a chance to taste those beautiful desserts, the recipes from Patty's book. Desserts, LaBelle. They were delicious. Oh, Patty, they were so good. I oh, yeah, appreciate I that. Oh, yeah, scoffed them down. So I put thank my, you. My soul is in there. A, a black owned bakery provided on South Street. Yes. And uh, they're the only ones on South Street. So we are grateful to uh, Sweet Life Bakery for, for the thank delicious you. treats. Okay, so we are now at the part of our program, Pat, where we're going to take some questions. We um, Ooh, took some questions. Yeah, you're warm, right? Here, I need here. water. Why don't you, you want some water? Child, yes. Can we get Adrian some water for Patty? And, it could uh, be cold. cold. It's funny. Water. Somebody wrote, if, if you ever opened a restaurant, what would it be called? And that's Evan Burton. Evan, where are you? Evan? Oh, there's Evan. OK, Evan, we're waving to you. Uh, and Evan, Patty actually had a restaurant back in the when in the she, right, she, you remember she, Robert? Yeah, I had the I had the clothing store and the restaurant, and it didn't do very well, mm. you know. But I still I'm going to try it again. I am. It was ahead of its time. It was. I mean, a lot of and celebrities. I don't understand when you when you have things in Philadelphia and you hope that people will respect you and come to your restaurant. Sometimes I think it's black on black crime. Oh wow! <laughs> they they won't come to mine, but they'll go to others. And sometimes we don't support each other. And I, I would love it if all colors came to my restaurant. You know, but they didn't do it. So it's never too late for me to do it. I was going to say one. maybe in the future, because sure. perhaps at this point with the cooking, your cooking show, uh -huh. with the cookbooks. Yes. You know, you've built up. And my food was following. good at the restaurant, but nobody came. I, I, I <laughs> went. It was delicious. You, you were, there. were there. You were the and, one. And your clothing store. On um, Walnut, I, I actually wore a dress recently that I bought from your clothing store as oh, well. Oh, yes. Custom, one-of-a-kind nice pieces. Yeah. yeah. It was great. 
But you try things, and if they fail, you keep on keeping on. And you've done that with great success. You had the betting line. Do yes, you plan that's still to do at Macy's, Macy's? And, and in Walmart, my, and my betting. I have so many things, thank you, Lord, on the table. What's coming, that, what's yeah. coming up next? I can't tell you. You can't. She can't tell us. No, okay, I can't tell so, you. All I, right, Brandon. But I'll tell you first before okay, everybody Okay, you'll tell me. Things. All right, thank yes. you, Pat. All right, being the legend that you are, what musical tribute that you have received has been most heartwarming? Might add that Patty has mm -hmm. multiple NAACP achievement, BET, mm -hmm. uh, two Grammys, uh, go, World Music Awards. You just have, but. The question from Brandon. Brandon, where are you? That's Brandon? me right here. Hi, Hi Brandon. Hey, Hi, Brandon. OK, so go Talk. ahead. Your question, I asked okay, it. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Brandon's shy now. No, I'm just, I'm just in love with you. That's all. Oh, oh. thank That's you, all. Brandon. My question, um, being you've received so many tributes and honors, just cause we, we all love you. You're a legend. Of all of them, what was the most, like, which one did you leave and get in the car and start crying? Like, ooh, child, she sang that song. All of them. All of them were special because when I can achieve uh, the love of people to see me as being honored with an award, I always say, I hope I can live up to it. And they all mean the same to me. It's like, thank you, Jesus. Really. Thank you. What else? Just one more. This is technically is not a question, but growing up, because I've loved you so much, I've always been jealous of your son. Like, I wanted you to be my mom. <laughs> and when I... Jealous of Zuri. No, when, really? I saw, when I saw Zuri walking, I said, I'm a poor Come over here, let me see you. Come over here. <laughs> you could be son worthy, let me see. Oh, he's I, so cute. I Come saw on. him. Well, thank you. Uh -huh. I saw him walking, and I'm thinking, my mom will be mad, but I'm gonna tell him that I really wanted his mom to be my mom. <laughs> like. Be being from Philly, when I meet people out of town, I can lie and say we related because they can't verify it. So, they can't. No, they can't. So, from now so. that I'm talking to you, from here on out, anybody asks me, you my aunt. I'm going to tell them, I'm Aunt Patty. We'll, we'll, we'll take a selfie it's later, true. okay? It's true. Okay. Thank you. I love you. Okay, I love Brandon, you you're your son. Brandon, Thank or you. nephew, or cousin, or. Right? Okay. Uh, Tawanda. Tawanda Edwards? Tawanda, where are you? Where are you? Okay, Adrian's coming over to you, Tawanda. Okay. This is wonderful. Hi, Patty. Hi. I met Hi. you earlier. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. we did. Um, it's just a pleasure being here, and you're, you're my idol. One of my questions was, because you have so many things going on, uh, how are you able to balance that? Most people wait and do one project and move on to the next. It seems like you have so many things going on at one time. How are you able to manage that? I said that to my friend today, Norma. I said, Norma, look at all this stuff I have coming up. You know, um, everything that I have coming up, I think I, I take it as a blessing. And at 72, to have all Amen. of these things coming to me, Amen. there's, you know, um, there's nothing that could stop me from achieving everything that's given me on my plate. I'm gonna do it as, I'm just gonna do it to death. You know, and I'm just, I'm happy that things are coming in every day. And at the age of 72, I'm getting more attention than when I was 50 wow. or, mm -hmm. or 20. It's like, I'm just blessed with that good old stick. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It's a love stick. Yes, you and are. And people want to see more of me now than they did back in the day. And we're going to hope that continues on for the next 25, the 30 years, and yes. so on and so on. Yeah. And I guess I had a second part question. Um, what is your inspiration um, for your, your, your desserts? Like, what, what inspires you to do that? I love to cook. And whenever I make the peach cobblers at home, and people say how much they love them, it just makes me want to make something else because I love compliments. I love standing ovation and compliments. Okay. You know, when, with the music, when I get a standing ovation at the end of a song, that just makes me feel so great. And when I make food for you and you say you want seconds or can I take some home, that's like a standing ovation. So I am ready for those standing ovations, honey. 
I got oh, many amazing. more coming. Amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Uh, Wanda Slater. Wanda, oh. raise your hand, please. Oh. W w Wanda, you right there? Hi, Are you sister. together? Are you and Tawanda together? Y yes. Okay. The question I had was what inspired you? I, you wrote it down. I think well, you did. What, yeah, but basically I wanted to know what got you started? Like what, I know you, she talked about inspiring, but when did you decide to do a cookbook? Like many years ago to do my first one because I can cook. That's <laughs> inspiration because I know that I'm pleasing people. So the inspiration is to give as much. And everybody who got my first cookbook, they said, Patty, at the airports or wherever, grocery store, I made your macaroni and cheese, and it came out just like you said it would. Oh, Follow okay. the, the directions. I'm, I'm ready to give you all of my uh, secrets. OK, so it was something you decided to do. No one, like, Patty, go make a book. Heck no. Nobody can okay. push me into nothing. That's all I wanted. <laughs> no. I have to want to do these things. Yes. And, and do them with class, uh, dignity, mm -hmm. and knowing that you're satisfying yourself. Because like I said, I know I can sing, and I know what songs I might sing that make you stand up for me. <laughs> and I know what dishes I'll make to make you give me another standing ovation. Hey, keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you so okay, much. OK, do we have another few questions? The gentleman over here, Adrian. Thank you. And we'll try to get over there, over there. Hey, Miss Patty. I'm your biggest fan. Hi. My name is Tracy. Um, I want to congratulate you on your new cookbook. Thank and you. I'd like to know, you mentioned that Aretha Franklin is somebody that you wanted to sing with. Is there any other artist, female or male, that you've never sang with that you wanted to sing with? No. <laughs> Would you like to sing with me? No, I did Michael Bolton, Michael McDonald, Grover Washington. Oh, Bobby Womack. Bobby, oh gosh. I love that one. Bobby Womack. Yeah. Yes. Bobby Womack. And I, I, I think that's the only males that I've performed with. Okay. But there are no others that I can think of. No one else? Would huh? you like to sing with me? Uh, what what did said, you would say? You like to sing with him? Would you like to sing with me? Can, can you, you sing? sing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Show I, me. I've if, had the let me hear you sing. I've had the opportunity of singing with you on several occasions. But I know. I'm not that good. But sing. <laughs> we'll do a little bit. If only you knew. No. OK. Have, have, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. I love you, though. OK. Ha have a seat. Thank I you. won't lie to you. OK. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, but wait, let me tell you. Let Thank me tell you, you some years ago, Patty told me, I don't know, I think I was trying to sing something, and Patty was like, Deanna, stick Keep to your talking job. on the radio. <laughs> don't quit your, your day I job. I did, yeah, yes. I can't sing. Yeah, if, if I can't you sing. can't, I'll let you know. Adrian, can we go over here, and then we'll come over there. Yes, right over here. That's fun. Yeah. She keeps it real, real. Welcome, Hi, Patty. good evening. Um, Hi. My name's Raphael. Um, I saw you the first time when I was 23 years old in Atlantic City, and I think our city hall opened for you, maybe. Yes. It was way back, uh -huh. and I was hooked since then. But my question is, I've seen a lot of entertainers, and the first thing that hit me is you're the most authentic person I've ever seen on stage. Thank you. And, and true, and I, and I remember that day someone came up there, and they were a little bit drunk, and you were so concerned about them. You probably don't remember that, but you were concerned about them because you thought they were going to get hurt or fall. And I thought, this person is wonderful. What do you contribute being that way? Because there's a lot that aren't. I see, I see people as myself, and I treat people the way I would want to be treated. And there were some people last night at a book signing. I was in New York, and somebody said that person has AIDS or something, and why would I hug them? because I don't think I'm better than that person. And no matter what, they paid, stood in that rain and bought my book. And I appreciate people who really, really care for me. And I would never shame them. Never let them feel like a penny waiting for change. Because we're all, we're all the same. And sometimes I get in trouble for being too outgoing with people. But I can't help it. That's who I am. Yes. Uh, there was uh, hmm. the, uh, with the hat on. Yes, Adrian's on her way over there. Bear with us. How you, you guys doing well? Yeah. You good? 
great. Ooh, like, hi, nice. Patty. Hi. Uh, first of all, Tudor says hello. She sends her love. Tudor? Yes, Tudor. Where is she? Yes, uh, she lives in, uh, up in Mount Erie now. She's what? Yeah, up Mount in Mount Erie. Erie. Oh, good. Tell her I said my love. I know you do. Um, I wanted to ask you about your barbecue sauce because uh -huh. we really, really love it, and it's hard to find now. So is that still on the market? Yes, it is. Is that Bed Bath & Beyond? Okay. And uh, there, it's, it's still all over. Right, and Stephen loves that barbecue sauce. Oh, thank and, you. And um, how about you and your hot sauce? I know you love That's it. out, too. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, well, keep Every up no, I said keep up Everything the good work. Everything is still going on. You. Pardon me? Keep up the good work and we love you. Thank you so much. Okay. Right, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Adrian, Adrian, there's a young lady standing right there. Oh, that yeah, the, yeah. Okay. Yes, that young lady right there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Pass the mic. Oh, Hi, thought, Betty. Okay. I thought it was you. I'm very shy. I'm sorry. My name is Darlene Jones and I've been following you since I was five years old. Um, hmm. I'm 20, no, I'm just kidding, I'm 39 now. <laughs> no, 39 and, I, and fine. Thank you. Um, I own a restaurant, mm -hmm. and I would love to invite you and five of your guests so you can come sample some of my food. And I'm also writing a cookbook. It's a uh -huh. diabetes cookbook because my whole family has diabetes. Um, oh. I work with the um, American Diabetes Association, I'm mm -hmm. hosting a gala for diabetes. I challenge um, Philadelphia restaurants to take the charge for it and put some diabetes food on their menu. Yes. I have 15 restaurants signed up. 15, what did you say? I have 15 restaurants signed up so far. And my goal is the entire Philadelphia to have diabetes-friendly food, because my whole family. Oh. Oh. What's it's, the name of your restaurant? <laughs> it's yes. called Star Fusion. It's right off City Line Avenue, near your home, actually. It's I'm right sorry, say the name again. It's called Star Fusion. Star Fusion. Um, yeah. I will come. It's yeah, on City Line Avenue? I would love to Avenue? invite you and treat you. So yeah, you I would see. love that. Thank you. I will come. I would love it. I, I studied in Thailand, so my dishes are American, Asian, and Caribbean influence. So I would love oh, you to see Oh, it. wonderful. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I, well, I, I will come there. And I'll bring a lot of people with me. Okay, Adrian, right over here. Uh, what, what'd you uh, say? Right here. She said, shut it down. <laughs> okay. Oh, I will, I will be there. Hello, Miss Patty. My Hi. name is Becky Schulberg. And I've been a fan since your Lady M days. And I heard a bit of a backstory, if maybe you could confirm it, that you designed the costumes. And that um, it inspired David Bowie and some other people who kind of stole some of your ideas. Is that Kiss. true? Yeah, Kiss. Um, mm -hmm. We had the same designer, uh, Larry Legaspi, for LaBelle's Outrageous Outfits. And they saw them, and they also went to Larry Legaspi, and he made them all of their outfits. So we were the first to do that. And you know the breast things that Madonna wears? Sarah Dash did it better than anybody. Will people be able to take the picture? And that's a compliment. It's a compliment when anybody does something that you do, you take that as an honor. And I sure do. Yes, thank you. We want to mention also that Patty is going to be in AC in May mm -hmm. coming up. So yeah. for hometown folks, that's only an hour away. And she's doing, when is it? Oh, June. OK, I thought it was May. Thank you no. for correcting me. I didn't um, know. June 24th, right, right? Uh, Atlantic City. And you're going to be touring all over. People oh, yeah. can visit your it's social like media. Are you active on social media? OK. <laughs> That would be a yes. Oh, wait, wait. I just really got a pretend cell phone. Uh -huh. The flip kind, the old. Uh -huh. I don't do that other social media. And I mean, like, I just, I just chill. Okay. <laughs> you have other people to do that for But you. I just got this little baby cell phone. I'll give you my number. Okay, thank you. I thought I had it. Okay. You have my, my I, landline. I have your landline. I have the yes. house line. Okay. Well, <laughs> you have been a remarkable and splendid audience. Mm -hmm. You give it up for yourselves. <laughs> and I also want to let you know, those of you who have uh, done your VIP, uh, Patty will be taking photographs. Uh, we want to ask you to be considerate and not swarm her. Uh, we, we are going to wrap things up here. 
and Patty's gonna take a, a slight breather. And those of you who are going to take photographs, the staff here, the very capable staff at WHYY will assist in the process. I wanna reiterate where, where we started our conversation, Patty, by saying we were talking upstairs in the general manager's office that we want to encourage you to continue to support this very important television station, yes. WHYY, and we the work to. of PBS. Yes, Ooh, it's so important to keep this alive. We have to support it like crazy. And some people trying to shut it down. <laughs> yes, we're not having that. We're working against that. So right. again, I want to shout out Adrian and the entire staff here at WHYY. They have been phenomenal. And I want to thank uh, Zuri Edwards, Patty's manager and son. Uh, your team, Norma, who I love, who's been with you forever. forever. You know, people, you don't always know the names of the people behind the scenes, but without them, I'm you know, nothing. Patty couldn't be here. That's so so true. we know her talent, but they're names of people that you don't know. But trust and believe, E, there's a team of people that keep her going and afloat. Uh, I, for one, as a longtime friend, love and adore you, Patty LaBelle. You know what I love? The way you say my name, when you say Pat. Oh, yeah, when I call you She's Pat. She's the only lady who calls me Pat. I love it, Pat. Patricia. <laughs> yes. Yes. But uh, I have great admiration for the work the body of work that you are giving us, because you, you're feeding us on so many levels. You're feeding us with food and desserts. You're feeding us with knowledge. You're feeding our souls with your music. Uh, just Patti LaBelle, we love you. We love Thank you. you we love you. you. <laughs> Shout out to Aaliyah Crawford. Shout out Derek Sampson. Shout out to WURD. WURD, the media sponsor for tonight. I'm Deanna Williams from 100.3 WRMB. My honor to be here tonight with my girl Patty.